Is it any wonder Stellantis, the owner of Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, as well as Fiat and Alfa Romeo are literally going out of business with prices like $114,958 for a Ram 3500 Laramie Night Crew? Or Jeeps like this, they're beautiful, but they're now priced for a Wrangler four-door Sport S 4x4 is priced at $66,000? Or even SUVs, we've got Jeeps, like this beautiful little Grand Cherokee, that's priced at a whopping $69,000. It's pretty clear with prices of Jeep, Ram, Chrysler products that the vehicles aren't selling. I mean, just look down this lot, we have trucks upon trucks upon trucks. There's 2022, 23, 24s, and even the 25s are starting to show up. The floor plant costs are getting out of control, and these dealers are struggling, telling the manufacturer to hold on, we can't handle these allocations. And yet, on the other hand, trucks keep piling up. And even with huge incentives, like we're noticing right here, Ram, $18,500 off on Ram 1500 models, we're seeing all kinds of discounts. Now, most of those are gonna come in the way of a classic 1500 or some older obsolete model that nobody wants, but the fact remains is there's huge incentives and yet people aren't buying. And as a result of all these vehicles starting to pile up, vehicles not selling, OEMs or these manufacturers have to start getting desperate. If they can't remove the cost, the floor plan costs, which are coming at an extreme value here recently with the manufacturers pushing out allocations, they have to do something more aggressive. Fixed costs, for example, and manpower or people power are the very cost that can be trimmed off the most aggressively. And so as a result, Stellantis is trimming a whole pile, thousands of employees. Literally, this company is going down like a sinking ship. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And there's thousands of stories out there with people that are hard done by actually having their vehicles repossessed because they can't make the payments due to this extreme cost of living crisis. People can't afford to eat. Housing prices are rising, going through the roof. And of course, car prices and SUVs and trucks aren't helping the matter. I actually received an email from a gentleman named George, who's an electrician who's out there working for many years. So are his wife, double income, two kids and a dog. And unfortunately, they never have a lot of extra money at the end of each month. And George needed a new vehicle so he bought himself a new Jeep very similar to this Willys as he explained and he just needed a vehicle because his was just finally worn out his wife needed some emergency surgery she can no longer work and she didn't have the benefits to actually cover her while she was away so now the entire financial burden laid on George and unfortunately now as a result he just recently lost his job about four months ago and sadly enough he was regretfully having to give his Jeep back because the banks reached out the huge payments he was making of about $1,150 were just far too much for him to tolerate. It was a decision, let the Jeep go or be homeless. That's the tough time and those are the hard decisions and stories that are heartbreaking that I'm hearing every single day. People are reaching out to me and sharing some of these just devastating storylines, the cost of living crisis. But this is impacting everybody, both on the repossession side as well as on the sales side. People aren't buying these vehicles because they simply can't afford it. And now what's starting to happen is the fixed cost. We recently heard the Ram Dodge leader, Tim, the CEO, literally took his walking papers, decided to retire after 32 years. On top of that, a bunch of other senior executives have been shuffled around and moved down the road. And now most recently, one of the chief executives from Jeep is finally getting packaged out as well. I mean, unfortunately, I believe the writing was on the wall and a lot of people constantly predict and tell me in my videos that it's not a shocker that these manufacturers have literally not been competitive selling overpriced vehicles to a market that just doesn't match. The middle class who typically buys full-size trucks, Jeeps, SUVs are more catered to the people, the working class, the blue collar like myself and like you guys are the very people that are intended to drive these and yet we can't afford them. How much is even a base working man's truck like this? We have a tradesman. Obviously it doesn't have all the fancy parts. We've got the plastic, unfinished, unpainted parts, very basic chrome bumper, a very basic vehicle. Yeah, it does give you the diesel single rear wheel. And this is very much a working person's vehicle. You can tow a lot of weight, so clearly is meant for doing some work, but it's a tradesman, so it's very basic. You don't get sunroof, you don't get leather. You basically get fabric, which is meant for work. But how many working people do you know, I don't know too many, that can actually afford to pay this kind of money for a brand new one ton working person's truck? priced at about $88,520. That's just way beyond what most people can muster up these days. And even if they could afford it, most people are a little skeptical, reluctant. They're actually holding off. 
if they have a few dollars in the bank account, they're more likely to hold on to it right now for a rainy day, as they say, because it's unsure. The environment is very much unstable. High interest rates, inflation, unemployment rates, everything's very unstable. The cost of living is extremely high with housing and vehicles like this. People don't have the money, so if they have a couple bucks in the bank, they're more likely to hold on to it right now. Because people are also looking for deals. And you know, the middle class typically looking for vehicles like Dodge, the Durango as we're looking right here, this is a typical person's vehicle that we just generally need to haul around the family to school, to grocery getter, to work and back and do everything. It's the type of vehicle that is suited for the middle class, like myself. And yeah, we have a Durango SRT 392, which, I mean, let's, okay, I'll be the first to admit, who needs a 392 in a grocery getter, but hey, to each their own. But this vehicle is going at $105,000. So clearly, who's got that kind of cashola? Now in Canada, as soon as you roll over and you're over 100 grand, you're also having to pay not just the provincial sales tax, harmonized sales tax, GST, you actually are now in a place where you have to pay potential luxury tax, which is 10% or 20% of the difference between over $100,000. It's clearly in a cost prohibitive state buying some of these vehicles that are over a hundred grand and there's lots of them. So just when Stellantis, Ram, Dodge, Chrysler, Fiat, Alfa Romeo thought things couldn't get any worse with brutal slumping sales, constantly emphasized that they're peeling back the ICE and they want to go full bore into the electrification market. And quite honestly, that seems like a very much a Hail Mary attempt when in fact, they're not even making enough sales to cut to profits and without having to dump a lot of their employees. And now when you think it couldn't get any worse, Stellantis has now offered 6,400 packages yes to US salaried workers to unload some of the debt and burden that they have on today's fixed cost they have to unleash a whole pile of workers so it's pretty clear with Ram power days the Ram 1500 classic is up to $18,500 off in total discounts to get yourself a brand new full-size half-ton pickup truck but manufacturers that aren't extremely desperate would never consider throwing those types of incentives around unless they needed to do something very drastic and not that it's a big surprise but still Stellantis is letting go these 6,400 workers due to challenging market conditions. And Stellantis claims they have about 12,700 employees in the US that are salaried non-union workers. So this takes a serious bite of the US Stellantis population. Have you ever heard of some of these prices for a Wrangler? Here we have a Rubicon as well, and it's a Rubicon X 4xE as we see. So it's partially electrified. And this vehicle is retailing for a whopping $85,000, which is clearly way more enough to choke a horse people can't afford to spend this kind of money on a jeep and yet stellantis composed of jeep ram chrysler dodge and alpha and beyond are yet not quite figuring out the fact that low vehicle sales can be vastly improved by the dropping of the prices we're in a market now where it actually demands more competitive pricing where people can actually afford to buy something and not necessarily just walk around and look at these beautiful shiny toys. So Stellantis is claiming that this big effort to ditch thousands of employees is all in anticipation of the upcoming electric vehicle marketplace. Why would that have to be? If we're growing one market, wouldn't we just transition workers to that side? Something doesn't smell right in my honest opinion. Apparently workers are getting reasonable packages. If you've been three to five years, you're probably gonna get a few months severance pay. If you've been somewhere in that 10 to 14 months, they might pay about six months wages. Workers with 15 to 19 years might get as much as nine months pay. If you're over 20 year employee, which is pretty tough to last that long, you might in fact get a year's worth of severance pay. And all these layoffs are bolstered by the fact back in April, Stellantis said about 3,500 workers were going to get laid off. Hourly workers, more hands-on type workers, were getting their walk-in papers in US and Canada. And now all of a sudden we're seeing salaried white collar and blue collar workers taking a further hit, digging much deeper into the workforce, into this organization showing that this company's on serious borrowed time. And last year, the first half of the year, Stellantis quoted alleged that they made about $12 billion in net profit, but they were severely hampered by the fact that $795 million went for the UAW strike costs that they incurred while workers walked the line. So that UAW strike that lasted 44 days took a real toll on the organization. On top of that, that's really hammering on Stellantis, but each individual Dodge Ram Stellantis dealership is feeling the burn as floor plan 
plant costs continue to rise. That doesn't directly hammer on the corporation per se, but it hammers on every single mega or smaller Dodge Ram dealer. And many of these dealers are gonna struggle to keep the lights on in the next coming months and possibly years. Just quickly look at all of the vehicles. We have Ram, Dodge, Jeep, Chrysler. We have some of the cars. We have some of the Hornets that they're not selling. They're the worst selling vehicle in the entire fleet. The Hornets are extremely high priced and with the association with Alfa Romeo and the Tonali means that the confidence and reliability isn't entirely there either. Now there could be worse vehicles on the market, but unfortunately these vehicles still don't sell regardless of how good or bad they are. They're simply priced too high, as are the Jeep Wranglers, way beyond the means of a vehicle that was likely built and designed for people that wanted to go off-roading, slam the backwoods, hit the mud pits. People like in high school, I knew people that were working at Kentucky Fried Chicken on the weekends and were able to afford to buy themselves a nicely equipped Jeep back in the day, many moons ago. Today's a different time, unless you're a white collar worker with a suit and a tie making $220,000 a year, it's very difficult to get your hands and actually even easily afford to pay for one of these Jeep Wranglers. And as we start to see rising inventory, like all of these trucks, SUVs, Jeeps, and cars alike, it paints a pretty obvious picture that the organization is struggling to sell vehicles. Did you also realize Stellantis products, specifically Ram, Jeep, and of course, Alfa Romeo, we can't forget about Jaguar, are some of the worst selling vehicles and slowest movers. Sadly, we're talking about the industry average being about 76 days supply available across the country. Meantime, Vehicles like the Ram and the Jeeps are often well over 150, 160 days supply. And when you actually break it down, there's tons of 23 inventory that are more like 360, 380 days supply. And I'm still seeing 2022, where now we're talking about six, 500 days supply for some of these vehicles that are still hanging around. Brand new old stock 22s are still kicking around on many of these lots. So while a lot of you out there are a lot like me, you know what, you may have the money, you may not, you don't see the value there, the high price are just not making a lot of sense or maybe you just literally can't afford it like a lot of people where they're basically hovering on and hanging on by a thread of course here I just continue to drive my old 2003 Ram here this thing has done me well yeah sure you get a little faded headlights and the vehicle maybe isn't perfect it's got the older nerf bars and I've got chrome steel wheels but it definitely works and it fits the bill so in the midst of this cost of living crisis less people are buying the confidence isn't there and more sad stories like George losing their vehicle means reposition repositions are on the climb people can't afford a lot of these vehicles prices just don't seem to be giving anybody a break and these manufacturers just aren't learning a lesson they're gonna feel the hard way and sadly as less and less people are going out there shopping for these brand new expensive shiny Jeeps SUVs pickup trucks and the like people just can't afford these vehicles and as a result the organization as a whole Stellantis is really feeling the burn having to unload their fixed costs pay increasing rising floor plant costs and living in quicksand slowly watching the life dribble away the worst part is Stellantis isn't the only one socking it to the customers check that out have you heard what Toyota has been up to lately definitely want to check that hope to see each and every one of you on the next one we'll see you real soon bye bye